Hello, my name is Dr. Chris Hickton, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can reverse score, check the reliability of a scale, and then create a composite score when using psychometric measures. In this particular example, I'm going to be using the 10 item version of the perceived stress scale. One recommendation I have is whenever you're using psychometric scales in your research, you have two things. You have a validated copy of the scale that will show you what it's out of. So you can see in this particular case, it's on a zero to four scale. And it will also show you how the scale should be scored. So you can see the items four, five, seven, and eight should be reverse scored and then summed together. The other thing that I'd recommend you have is a validation paper, which will uh, contain key psychometric information which you'll need to uh, for reporting. So here we've got an example from 2019 produced by Bake et al. And if you scroll down here, you can see that we've got a sentence that tells us what internal consistency they got for the 10 item scale. Okay, so that being said, I'm going to be using Jamovi because uh, out compared to SPSS and R, I found it to be the quickest and easiest way of doing the reverse scoring and creating a composite score. So I'm using Jamovi 2.3.17, uh, which is one of the latest versions. And I'm recording this video in October 2022. So the first thing I'm going to do is go and open up the scale by clicking the hamburger menu, clicking browse and then going on to our data that we want, which is server.sav, and then going open. Now, because I know my data set, I know that we want to use uh, a series of 10 variables, which are called PSS. So if I go factor, reliability analysis, and then search here for PSS, you can see that these items come up and we've got PSS 1 to 10. You can also see that we've um, got some reverse scores in this data set, but handily, Jamovi has a way of easily reverse scoring the data as well. So we'll use the built-in Jamovi function for that. So what I'm going to do is hold Shift and select all 10 items. And you can see it comes up with a Cronbach alpha of 0.3. Now that is a lousy Cronbach's alpha and the recommendation is that you need at least 0.7 in order to have an acceptable internal consistency. But ideally you should have a Cronbach's alpha of 0.8 and that is according to Clark Carter 2018. What we then want to do is we then want to go and select some items and some options here. So we're going to select mean of the score, standard deviation of the score, Cronbach's alpha if dropped. So this video aims to be showing you how to report your internal consistency for validated scales. But say if you were creating your own scale, then you might look down here and see which items would be dropped, particularly if it was less than 0.7. I'm also going to select mean and standard deviation of each item and item rest correlation, which is how each item correlates with the rest of the um, items. Finally, I'm going to do correlation heat map. That will show me a, a, a visual kind of guide of how each item correlates. And you can see that if it's red, that means it, it's negatively correlated. And if it's green, that means it's positively correlated. And generally, the more green something is, the more kind of positively correlated it is. But if we scroll up here, you can see that it tells us that it thinks items four, five, seven, and eight should be reverse scored. Now, if you think back to the original um, scale I showed you, that agrees with what we saw earlier. So, OV has a nice feature where you can just move these in like so. So, we can select 4, 5, 7, and 8. And you'll see this magically update as we go. And you can see that that has jumped to a Cronbach alpha of 0.8. So, 0.8 is great, really. So we now know that we've got very good at internal consistency. The next thing we might want to do is now that we've done kind of the hard work, 
you might want to go and save your composite score. So Jamobi has a feature for that. So if you click under save, you've got an option of saving a mean score and you've got an option of saving a sum score. So once again, looking back at the description, you can see that we want to click on sum score, which basically means it will sum together, add all the items together and um, do that for you. So now, if you go at the end of our data set, which is here, you can see that we've got an additional variable, which is called sum score, which I'm going to relabel to be something a bit more sensible. So I'm going to call it PSS 10 total. And what you can also see is that in the description, it tells you which items have been summed together and which items were reversed. Now, you'd obviously repeat this for every scale you've got. You can see that this radically speeds up the time in reverse scoring and summing data. Uh, let's say that your supervisor requires you to do your analysis in SPSS. You can go onto here and you can choose export and then go browse. Come down here and choose SPSS and then we're going to save it as survey 3. And then what you'll find is that you've got a new data file where you can continue your analysis in SPSS. The final thing I should do is show you how to report this. So typically you'd report this in your method section and you'd say something like the following. So according to Bake et al, 2019, the perceived stress scale has good internal consistency with a convex alpha coefficient reported of 0.82. And you can see if we go back to their paper, you can see it says 0.82. Okay, then you would say, in the current study, the climax alpha was 0.85. And you can see that that is taken from there. So you pop that in your method section and you'd export this. Um, you'd copy all of this for your appendix and just stick it in a Word document or whatever. And that is how you can reverse score items, check the reliability of the scale and create a, uh, a composite score uh, in Jamobi very easily. So hopefully this video has been useful. If it has been useful, please give it five stars. Or if it's on YouTube, please give it a like. If you've got any questions or comments, you can leave it in the comments or discussion section, or you can email me directly on c.hickson at newman.ac.uk. Thank you very much for listening.